Welcome to Everyday Cooking with Anne. Today we're going to be making a potato side dish. Maybe you've made them before, but I'm going to teach you a way that you can make them quickly and easily for a great side dish to any meat. I'm going to be making twice baked potatoes. Uh, we're actually going to be playing these on our Easter playlist to go along with our ham. I know there's a lot of really great potato casserole recipes out there that goes with ham, but I'm going to teach you how to make this because if you like mashed potatoes, you will love twice baked potatoes. Okay, what I have over here is I have scrubbed and washed all of my potatoes. I, the recipe calls for four um, basically medium, medium large rest potatoes, but some of these are extra large, so we'll be cooking them extra long than what the recipe calls for. I have, this is probably more like what the potatoes should look like for this recipe. Um, I'm adding two extra potatoes because I would like to have extra potato flesh to add into my other potatoes so they are mounded very beautifully and they will look a lot better than if they're just kind of sunk in a little bit. So I'm going to show you, teach you how to make twice baked potatoes. The first thing that we're going to do and how we can make these uh, a lot quicker than putting them in the oven for an hour. I've got my oven turned on to 450 degrees. It's getting nice and hot. And the first thing I'm going to do is prick each of my potatoes a couple of places with a fork because we want to have a place for the steam to escape. We don't want our potatoes exploding on us while we're baking them. Okay, and I'm going to put in four at a time. These four potatoes I'm going to put in my microwave. And I'm going to put them on for 6 to 12 minutes. I'm going to turn it halfway through. So I'm going to put it on high for 6 minutes. And I'm going to turn each of the potatoes halfway through and cook for another 6 minutes. And then I'll take you to that point. And then we will be putting our potatoes in the oven, on the rack, not on a pan, just right on the rack for another 20 to 25 minutes until they're completely done. You don't want to have it undone at all because you need to be able to take out the flesh of the potato to make our wonderful mashed potatoes. Okay, let's take it to that point now. We're at the next step. I've already taken my potatoes out of my microwave. Remember that I cooked, I baked those on high uh, six minutes on turning around and did another six minutes. So I had the smaller potatoes which I did for a smaller amount. I put those potatoes in my 450 degree oven for about 20 minutes and I just checked them and they are really just perfectly done. So I'm going to go ahead and use my nice big fork here to take these out and put them on this tray. Now I have my two extra potatoes which I'm going to add in as well. Here, okay. I'm going to leave my, my 450 degree oven on because we're going to be crisping up the potato skins, which makes it so good. You're going to love, if you like potato skins, and I do like them, they'll be nice and crispy when we put our mashed potato filling in. Okay, the next step that we're going to do is um, I need, because these are very piping hot, I'm going to take each potato and I'm going to turn it on its side here and I'm going to cut it right in half. This is hot and steamy. You can see the steam coming out. At this point, I'm going to take my potato. This is called potato flesh. I'm going to take, now this is what's very important because now that these are nice and hot, you need to have your potato taken immediately out and put into your mixer, your KitchenAid or your Breville, which is what I have. You want to remove most of it, but not all of it. Put our skin back on our tray, and we'll do the next one. And this is why your potatoes have to be done very well, which works out well putting it in the microwave. You're not waiting too long, and it scoops out nicely. It makes a nice, beautiful shell. All the potato flesh has been removed from my potato skins. I'm going to put these in the oven for 10 more minutes. They're going to crisp up nicely. And while those are baking, um, I'm going to show you what we're going to do to make our mashed potatoes. And this is very similar to the very same mashed potatoes that I have another video for. 
because I put pretty much the same ingredients in there depending on your preference. Okay, I have about a half a cup, a little bit more of buttermilk ready to go into my potatoes. Can you see a picture of our potatoes here? All unflushed here, ready to go. So I'm going to put my buttermilk here. If you don't happen to have buttermilk, which is what happened to me today, um, I went ahead and put a tablespoon or two of white vinegar in my milk, just a half a cup of milk, and I just let it uh, ferment for a little bit while I was waiting to do this video, and it turned out to a nice buttermilky texture. Okay, I'm also going to add a half a cup of sour cream. And this is all going to be relative now because of the size of potatoes that you have. You may need more or less of things, but I just throw in some nice butter. I'm going to have some green onion in here. I love green onion. If you don't want to put that in your potatoes, it's just a very nice additional touch. I'm going to be adding some salt and pepper. Probably at least a teaspoon and a little bit of maybe half a teaspoon of pepper. This is all to your preference. You want to taste your potatoes and see what you need. If I need any extra liquid in my potatoes, I love evaporated milk. It makes the creamiest mashed potatoes. Okay, I also have to put in a little bit later the, the cheese and I'm going to put a little bit of garlic salt. This adds so much. So let's get going with the potatoes. You want to make sure these are still steaming hot so they'll whip up nicely. If you wait too long to do that, they'll turn out like glue. You do not want gluey bashed potatoes. And I'm using a wire whip because I like to have what you call whipped potatoes, like whipped cream. But these are whipped potatoes. And I'm going to go ahead and put these down here a little bit. these down here a little bit more so they all get evenly whipped and because we don't want any chunks of potato in here we want it to be nice and smooth okay I just tested it and I needed a little bit more salt which I add a little bit more pepper what you can do too is I like to add a little bit of cheese that will kind of melt into these mashed potatoes I just add a little handful these will also go on top. When we're ready. Okay. Let me show you what they look like. I added a little bit more of the canned milk. This is the consistency that you want to have. Okay, uh, just a moment when our potato skins come out, we will stuff the potato. The potato mixture is all ready to go. You can see that our potato skins are just perfectly crispy and they're, they hold up really well. They're not all flimsy, falling apart. You want a nice, crisp shell. Okay, and I'm going to take this potato and I'm going to stuff it really nicely in here. This is why I made extra because I, like, I don't like them to look skimpy. I like them to look luscious and big. Now I'll go back and maybe add a little bit more depending on how much, but you can see how much potato flesh I have, quite a bit. When we're finished here, we'll top it again with some cheese. And we will put it back into our very hot oven. These are great potatoes to make for a holiday dinner, and the reason why is that you're not making them at the last minute, creating a mess to make mashed potatoes. You can have them all done, set them out in another room on a counter somewhere. You can sit out for quite a while before the last minute when you need to put them in the oven, which is what we're doing now. Okay, we are going to put these in our oven until this cheese. Now, if you don't put the cheese on top, you can keep it in the oven a little bit longer. It'll make nice, brown, wispies, like kind of like meringue, like potato meringue, but we don't want to burn our cheese. So we're probably going to put this in the oven for maybe about five minutes, five to seven minutes till the cheese is just nicely melted. Okay, we're taking our potatoes out of the oven. 
done perfectly. You will find this recipe in my cookbook and also in the description below under Show Me More. You can also find another couple of great side dishes that will go along with my Easter playlist. Up in the corner here, you will find my green bean almondine with bacon, as well as my asparagus. Very simple recipe, which I'm going to show you as well.